Hey there, welcome back to Geeky Greenhouse. In today's video, I'll be talking all about leaf mulch and leaf mold. So most home gardeners know all about compost, which is essentially broken down organic material from your kitchen or your lawn. But leaf mold is another very similar product made using just leaves. So in today's video, I'll describe what leaf mulch and leaf mold are, how you can make your own at home, and what the benefits and uses are for it. Before I get started, there's a link down in the description where I've written all about making leaf mold at home. If you want an article to reference or you prefer to read, check that out in the description below. So at its most simple, leaf mulch is just using leaves as a mulch covering for your plants. Like any other mulch like straw or grass clippings or even plastic mulch, leaves can be a very effective mulching. Leaf mold, on the other hand, is broken down leaves over the course of many months to many years. Leaves also make a great addition to compost, and that's one of the uses for leaf mulch, is to add it to your compost bin, and that will add some carbon or brown material to your compost. But leaf mold and compost are different in one very important way. Compost is broken down primarily by bacteria. That's what heats up your compost pile in the very early stages. Bacteria are multiplying, dividing, causing friction, which effectively heats up the pile. That's not gonna happen with pure leaf mold because leaves are primarily broken down by fungi. If you go digging around in a deciduous forest, you're gonna find white mycelium. That's effectively the root system of fungi. It's not really roots, but that white mycelium is what is breaking down fallen leaves and branches from trees. As your leaf mold ages, you'll likely see this mycelia forming inside of your pile, and that's a good sign. That's really nothing to worry about. In fact, it's essential to the process of making leaf mold. After the leaves have broken down for a long period of time, the end result really looks a lot like compost. It's a very crumbly, dark, rich looking material that you can use to amend your garden beds. So with that, let's move into some of the benefits of leaf mulch and leaf mold, how you can use it around your gardens. Let's start with vegetable gardening. This is a great amendment for pretty much anything you're growing in your veggie garden. You can use it in potted plants, you can use it in your raised beds, you can use it in your in-ground beds. It's a really great amendment for improving soils as well. So if you have sandy soil, it's gonna really improve the water retention in your soil. On the other hand, if you have dense clay soil, it can also help aerate that soil, much like compost would, by adding more porous, spongy material to the soil. I also mentioned compost. You can add this at any point to your compost pile to add brown materials or carbon rich materials. If you find that your pile is smelly or if it's a little bit slimy, add some carbon material, add some leaves at any stage of decomposition. They're great to add to your compost bin. Another great use for leaf mulch is to use it in your lawn. Part of the process of making leaf mulch and leaf mold is shredding down the leaves, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But instead of bagging it up and putting it into a pile, you can just let it sit on your grass, allowing it to filter through the individual blades, and there it will slowly break down over time, adding nutrients and also suffocating out weed seeds from germinating in your lawn. And the last use is basically general use in your landscaping or in your woodland gardens, flower gardens, anywhere you're growing plants, you can use leaf mulch and leaf mold to your benefit. If you think about a natural deciduous forest, the leaves are falling every year in the fall, enriching the soil and feeding the trees that drop the leaves in the first place. This means that leaves make a great natural mulch for anything that you might find growing in a woodland setting. So if you're growing evergreens, if you're growing any type of tree, you can put your leaf mulch around those trees, especially early on, it can be a great benefit, adding essential nutrients to the soil to feed the plants. Now the main benefit of any mulch is to suffocate out weeds, insulate the soil from hot and cold temperatures, and to help retain moisture in the soil. But leaf mulch makes an especially good mulch because it's natural, it allows water to flow through it freely, and it will slowly break down, releasing nutrients into the soil over time. So now let's talk about how to make your own leaf mulch at home. To start, you'll obviously need to collect some leaves. If you have deciduous trees around in your yard, that's great. 
One of the drawbacks of trying to make leaf mulch is that the leaves tend to blow away on windy days. So we'll take two measures to prevent this. And the first one is to shred up the leaves. Now to do this, I use a lawn mower and this is by far the best way to do it because you don't have to get any special equipment. Most people have a lawn mower. And if not, you might be able to bug one of your neighbors to borrow their lawn mower to get the job done. To start off, mow a patch of your lawn so that the grass is short. You don't want to be sucking up any grass along with the leaves. That might trigger a hot compost because the grass blades are a nitrogen source which can lead to bacterial breakdown. So with a freshly mown patch of lawn, pile up your leaves in this area in an even layer and then start going over it with your lawnmower. There's no need to bag the leaves at this point because we're going to go over it several times with the lawnmower to make sure that the leaves are shredded to a pretty fine consistency. Once you've gone over the leaves three or four times, you can then put on the bagging attachment to your mower and move the leaves off to the side to make room for the next batch. If you don't have a lawn mower to shred your leaves, they do make purpose-built leaf shredders. You can also use a string trimmer or a weed whacker and put the leaves into a large garbage pail or a garbage bin and pulse the weed whacker in the leaves until they've broken down into a smaller size. By taking out all of those air pockets, you're really gonna condense that pile of leaves into a really small space, which both helps prevent the leaves from blowing away and allows them to break down more quickly. But even with your leaves shredded, they can still blow away in strong winds, so I highly recommend using something to contain them. And what we've done here is just use some T-posts. We have four T-posts and some chicken wire fencing uh, going around the posts. And this will allow the leaves to stay put where they are over the long period of time that they'll need to sit here to break down. One thing you should consider is where to place your leaf mold bin. And a good option is a relatively shady location underneath some trees. Shade will prevent the pile from baking in the sun and drying out. And being underneath a natural tree cover is a good location for this because we want those natural fungi, which are present in the forest, to find this pile as quickly as possible and get started breaking it down. Now to assemble the pile, you need three basic ingredients, your leaves, water, and air. This is the reason that we're using chicken wire is to allow airflow through the pile, but it also means that the pile is more likely to dry out over time. So as you're adding your shredded leaves to your pile, make sure that you're adding water and mixing really thoroughly. You wanna make sure the pile is very moist from the start all the way throughout. You don't want dry patches because the water is essential to get that fungal growth off to a good start. So just keep adding leaves, adding water, and mixing thoroughly with a pitchfork until your pile looks like it's well moistened and full of leaves. Now your shredded leaves can be used right away. Like I said, you can use it as a mulch in your garden. You can cover up your fall garlic planting, but the real gold comes from when you allow this to break down over several months, even several years, depending on how you prepared the leaves to begin with. This is a brand new pile. This is just a couple of weeks old, but after a number of months, it will start to darken in color. It will reduce in size and it will start to look a lot more like soil or dark, rich compost. So now I wanna give three very important tips for making leaf mold. Number one is to avoid using walnut leaves. If you happen to have black walnut or any type of walnut tree in your area, like we do here in Connecticut, don't use those leaves because they contain iodine, which is toxic to certain plants. Next is to avoid using leaves that have sat in the street. Many towns will actually collect your leaves for you so that they can compost them and use them for gardens or to give back to the community. But don't go around collecting other people's leaves that have been sitting in the street because there's a chance they've collected herbicides or other toxins from neighboring properties. And lastly, should you use pine needles in your leaf mold or leaf mulch? And the answer is yes and no. In this setting, I wouldn't add pine needles because they take much longer than normal deciduous leaves do to break down. So after a number of years, your maple leaves or your oak leaves may have broken down completely, but you'll be left with pine needles sitting in the pile, seemingly unchanged. Now, if you have a large number of pine needles, those do make a great mulch on their own, but they have a different consistency, namely they're a lot more fluffy, so we tend to keep them separate from our normal leaf mulch. However, we have used just pine needles as a mulch in our vegetable gardens, and they do a great job at insulating the soil. So I'd like to address one more question that I think you'll probably have, and that is, 
why don't I just use my leaves to make compost? Add a little bit of nitrogen, some coffee grounds, and some kitchen scraps, and I'll have a hot compost pile that I can use in just a few months instead of waiting six or 12 months or longer for leaf mold. And the reason is that they're different products. Leaf mold is a better product than compost in a number of ways. Number one is you can use this at any time. Right away, I can start using this as a mulch before it's broken down. I can throw it on top of my garden beds, but I wouldn't do that with a freshly made compost pile. I would also choose leaf mold over compost in a number of settings. One would be a woodland setting or a shade garden if you're growing plants that would find themselves in a natural woodland setting, then leaf mold will make a better soil amendment than compost. Another is if you have sandy soil, leaf mold makes an excellent absorbent, almost sponge-like material that helps retain moisture in your soil. So if you're trying to improve your soil, then leaf mold might just be better at it than your compost. But hey, we do both. We make compost and we make leaf mold and both have their uses in the garden. Either way, don't let your free resources like fallen leaves go to waste. Use them in one way or another, whether it's leaf mold or as a base for a new compost pile. Leaves are just a treasure in the garden and you should definitely use them to your advantage. Let me know what you do to make leaf mold at home. If you do anything differently than I do here, or if you have any tips for other gardeners, leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching Geeky Greenhouse and I'll see you next time. Doing his job.